What's up, YouTube? My name is Rob Guillory. This is my YouTube channel. If you've never been here before, the purpose of this channel is to encourage, inspire, and hopefully give insight into what can be sort of a crazy making industry. As always, I am talking about comics. This week, we're talking about something that uh, I'm a huge fan of. It's something that I am constantly an uh, analyzing and reanalyzing and nitpicking and tweaking. It's workflow. This is the thing that is going to be the most important if you are looking to consistently be productive, especially, you know, for me as a guy who has three kids and a wife and lots of other external obligations outside of the studio. Uh, I have to plan very, very, uh, very deliberately how I'm going to get that stuff done. So today I'm going to give you an in, some insight into just what my weekly workflow looks like. Uh, full disclaimer, uh, it does shift from time to time as life changes, as kids get sick and things pop up. I do shift, uh, especially as I start to juggle more and more projects. I have to, I have to pivot as needed. But this will give you a broad overview of how I work day to day. A lot of it is, is highly reliant on momentum. So pay attention to my day to day breakdown. I'll check you on the other side. So over the course of my career, one of the things I've, I've really prided myself on is my ability to consistently put out work, whether that's work for hire, creator own comics, commissions, whatever. I'm always working on something. And I guess because of that, one of the questions I'm asked most has to do with my workflow. Folks are always wanting to know how I'm able to consistently juggle projects, making time for each while not burning out. And I guess I'm not completely surprised by that. I mean, we live in a pretty crazy time where people seem to be busier than ever, but a lot of that time usually gets wasted on distractions, social media, and that sort of thing. Uh, so it makes sense to me that folks are so hungry for ways to maximize productivity while, and make the most of the time that they have. As far back as I can remember, I've always had a mind that's sort of focused on being productive. I remember being nine or 10 years old, making plans for how I'd use my time at my grandmother's house to work on mini comics, setting little deadlines for myself and whatnot. And as I got older, my intention to workflow and utilizing time got more and more honed as I took on little gigs in high school and in college. I was editor in chief of my high school newspaper. Then a couple years later, I became head cartoonist of my college paper. And both of those gigs taught me how to plan for time, scheduling in uh, focused work hours to get stuff done. In full disclosure, I was far from perfect at it. I made tons of mistakes, lots of times working on comic strips at the very last minute, but it gave me a basic understanding of workflow. But really the biggest game changer to my concept of workflow came right as I started drawing my image comic Chew back in 2009. As the book began to gain success, I became bound to a, mo a monthly schedule for the first time. And like I said, I'd never done a monthly book before. So every month I had to do about 20 to 22 pages of art plus a cover, and that includes pencils, inks, and coloring the book. And in case you've never drawn a page of a comic before, that's a lot of work. And that's a very small window to do all of that in. So I got very serious about scheduling the workflow, filling out a monthly planner with a really rough schedule. But as I completed the schedule, I found myself really depressed at the amount of work I had to do. And the moment that changed everything happened as my wife noticed my depression, looked at the schedule I'd made, and uttered four words that basically changed my outlook on workflow and on schedule. This schedule isn't realistic, she said to me. See, the schedule I had made for myself was so tight that the weight of all the work just completely crushed my spirit. To make the dates I'd set, I'd basically need to do nothing but draw comics every waking moment of my life. There was no margin for sick days or rest days, no time for dating her or spending time with my friends, nothing. So from then on, I completely shifted how I approach workflow and scheduling, trying to leave myself a little window of time for life because I'm going to get sick at some point or my kids are going to get sick or there's going to be a funeral or there's going to be a wedding. So back when I was doing Chew between 2009 and 2016, my work days were roughly like this. I'd start work at 8 a.m. I'd jump right into email, 
which would inevitably lead to cruising Twitter or Facebook until around 9 a.m. And around 9 to 9.30 a.m., I jump into penciling. And then I cut it off around noon for lunch. You know, about 1 p.m., I get back into it, probably checking email again, probably jumping back into Twitter at some point. And then, then from roughly 1.30 p.m. until 5 p.m., I'd ink the day's page. So by the end, I was able to do a complete issue of Chew in about five weeks. And that fifth week was usually reserved for coloring the book. I had a color assistant to help me at the time uh, with the flatting and whatnot. So I, had pretty, uh, I was pretty efficient all around. And I did this for about eight years straight, Monday through Friday and the occasional Saturday as needed. Over the course of about, give or take, 1,500 pages. Now, obviously, this was very productive for me. But looking back, I can see my priorities were all out of whack. Too much time on Twitter. Not enough time in the gym. Not nearly enough margin for any kind of balance. I was basically a machine during this time. And frankly, it was what, I, it was, what was needed at the time. You know, there are times in your career where work-life balance just sort of goes out of the window. And it's just time to grind. So that was my workflow then. But what about now? Well, something to take under consideration, and I've mentioned this before in previous episodes, is the fact that I was only 26 when I started Chew. I was newly married. I didn't have any kids. So I was traveling very light back then. Today, I'm 41 with three kids under the age of 14, married to an amazing woman who happens to also be an entrepreneur in her own right. So there's a lot more moving parts than there, than there used to be. There's lots of school car lines, there's soccer practices, there's jujitsu sessions, school events, and business obligations for my wife that I cannot miss. Basically, I'm a, I'm a really busy dude. My time is way more scarce now than it was a decade ago. So I've had to adjust how I look at my workflow. And the major difference is that I'm way more focused on weekly output than daily. And this is a subtle shift in, in focus and in thinking, but it actually does wonders for me mentally. So for example, 10 years ago, my daily output was basically the same every day because every day pretty much looked the same. Nowadays, because I have many other obligations, a doctor's appointment on one day, a speaking engagement on another, every day can look very different and somewhat random. And frankly, it drives me completely crazy sometimes because it, again, I like routine. But routine is hard to create when every day is dramatically different. So that's where my weekly workflow helps. Every week, I basically look at my calendar and see where the longest blocks of free time are. Typically, a four to six hour block of time is ideal. Wherever the biggest blocks of time are, that's where I'm going to plan and get the most done. And I generally structure my week so that one of my biggest blocks of free time falls on a Monday. This allows me to begin the week with a big wave of success. So before I go in depth with my weekly workflow, I need to set my goal. Again, it needs to be realistic. I know how much time I need to get a task done, so I use that knowledge to plan my weekly goal. So right off the top, I know three to four pages penciled and inked per week is about what I can handle right now while juggling a few different gigs. So that's my goal. Three to four pages per week, penciled and inked. So here's my current workly, uh, weekly workflow. Monday is my long day. I'm going to get a good eight to nine hours of solid work in. So that's my attack day. That's the day I start rolling the boulder uphill, trying to build momentum. That's the day I usually plan to pencil all the pages I have scheduled for that week. And actually yesterday was Monday and I was able to do almost four pages of pencils. So that's a great Monday. That sets me up for a really, really successful week. Tuesday is a half day for me because I pick up my kids from school so I can plan on about four to five hours of solid uninter uninterrupted work. And that's not horrible. Tuesday is usually the day I tighten up the previous day's pencils and maybe start tinkering around with some inks. So it's not as intense as the day before it. And really, that's sort of my goal. I want every day to get less intense as the week goes on. Again, Think of the image of pushing a boulder uphill. On Monday, you're probably going to have the most energy. So that's a great day to push that boulder as high as you can. Tuesday is all about building on, on Monday's momentum. Wednesday is sort of a weird day for me. 
I typically do at least one long Zoom call on that day. Whether it's for business or for a weekly Bible study I'm a part of. So based on that, I'm looking at two blocks of about three hours of real work, which isn't horrible. But again, because I'm multitasking with calls, it's not going to be nearly as intense of a work day as the Tuesday was. So work is getting done, but I'm entering a more casual rhythm. And by Wednesday, I'm deep into inking pages, which is way less mentally intense than penciling is for me. So by now, I've pushed the boulder over the hill, and now it's coasting on its own. I no longer need to extend the energy that I did on Monday. Thursday is another half day where I pick up my kids. So again, it's another four to five hour block of time. Again, I'm inking pages, probably listening, listening to podcasts or something. And we'll probably wrap up the inks today. So Thursdays are a nice, focused and relaxed day for me. Friday is another long day where I have a good eight to nine hour block of really focused work. So usually this day is for wrapping up any lingering pages I need to ink, as well as fitting in extra stuff like commissions, covers, or even YouTube stuff. So by Friday, I'm fairly spent from a busy week. So I try not to do anything that requires really, really intense energy on that day. I also try to list next week's chores as part of my weekly wrap up. And important to note, this weekly workflow is only one way I break down my scheduling. I also look at it from a yearly and a monthly overview. I chart my projects from a broader viewpoint, but this weekly breakdown is really where the rubber meets the road. This is what I live by and create within. So really the most important thing is to be realistic in how you map these things out, which can be hard because as productive as I am, I'd love to produce even more, but I have to make, I have to make my schedule based on the reality of my life, not based on my ideal. So keep that in mind as you chart your own plan. I hope it helps. All right, so that concludes another episode. I hope that you were able to get something helpful out of it. Again, a lot of my my uh, workflow habits have come from years and years of trial and error. Uh, tons of mistakes were made. A lot of times, I started real. I started sort of paying attention to my my daily flow and noticing that even on on a daily basis, my energy level would always sort of dip around the same time every single day, usually around two o'clock, sometime after lunch, and I would just get sluggish, work wouldn't be getting done, I'd have to really fight through it. And the same thing on a weekly basis. I would, I would, I would start to notice on certain days, uh, I was super energetic and super productive, and other days, usually about midweek, around hump day, uh, things would start to lag, I'd start getting less enthusiastic about what I was making. So. Being conscious of where your energy levels are, what your natural flow is on a day-to-day basis, as well as a weekly basis, will help you make a workflow that is custom to you. So pay attention to that. I think that it's um, the second you can sort of learn to be aware of your natural rhythms, the more you can make something that is sustainable in the long term. The only way you're, you're going to be able to be consistently productive over time is if you create a system that um, sort of leverages your natural rhythms in a way that allows you to, to take that energy that you have built up and pour it into the into the work, grinding through. You know, there comes a point in every creative's life where you need to to, to just grind. Sort of, even if you whether you feel like it or not, that's par for the course. But I think that willpower is limited. So if you can leverage that natural energy that you have coming off of a weekend, coming off of a vacation or whatever, if you can leverage that into the work, into your workflow, I think you'll be a lot more productive in probably less time. Because I've learned, as I've gotten older, frankly, I spend less time in the studio than I needed to spend about 10 years ago. And I probably get more stuff done today than I did back then. So that's that's kind of the fruit of learning your natural energy flows and channel channeling that into the workflow. So I'll probably dip back into this at some point because it's something I'm kind of obsessed with. I'm always tweaking this thing, trying to find the most efficient use of my time. So let me know how you guys, uh, how you took this episode. If there's anything that you got out of it, hit me in the comments section. Uh, where are you at with your workflow stuff? Where are your struggles? Um, let me know. I'm, I'm here to help. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, you know, hit the notification bell. It lets you know exactly when the new episodes come out. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you next week. Bye.